Hello, my name is Doug Lazier, and I wanted to record a quick video to share with you some uh, some uh, things that I've been working on that I think will have a, a very positive impact for those of you who are budgeting using uh, Sage Intelligence as the starting point for your budgets. Now, the techniques that I'll be uh, showing you, I believe, will also apply to those of you that are budgeting using Microsoft Excel perhaps not starting with Sage Intelligence. I will be using Sage 100 to show these techniques to you, but I've also applied the same techniques to Sage 300. I also believe that you can use these concepts in um, any, any of the Sage general ledgers and uh, also for other, other general ledgers. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration of of uh, what I'm referring to. And I'm going to start by looking at what, what should be a pretty standard Sage Intelligence report, showing uh, actuals for uh, for a fiscal year, the individual periods, and uh, showing it in a, a P&L type of a format. So a pretty standard Sage Intelligence report to which we've added the additional columns to calculate or create the new year budget. So actuals for 2019, new year budget for fiscal year 2020. Okay, so the, uh, the, the, the intent of the video is to show you uh, some of the techniques that I think will really help those of you, of you that are budgeting in, uh, in Excel uh, using Sage Intelligence or just straight out of Excel uh, when it comes to the part of getting the budget dollars and moving them back to the general ledger. And I will specifically be showing you Power Query. Power Query is a fairly new thing from Microsoft. It is built into uh, Excel, um, Excel 2016, Office 365, but you can get a free download from Microsoft if you're using Excel 2010 or 2013. And I'm actually using 2010 with the uh, add-in, the downloaded add-in. Uh, in what I'll be displaying today. Okay, so the uh, first thing uh, when you're creating a uh, a budget uh, in, in Excel, and again with the intent of taking it back to the general ledger, one of the critical parts is that we have uh, the information by period. So our fiscal year in this case is January through December, so it's a standard calendar year, but we do have values for uh, for each of the different periods. The other important thing when you're doing that is that you have the account numbers. Uh, when we're gathering up the budget dollars to put back in the general ledger, we need the account numbers to make that work successfully. The other thing is that we often have uh, in the budget process multiple sets of budgets, meaning for each department or cost center or division, uh, region, territory, whatever your, your organizational breakdown is. So in this case, what I'm showing is extremely simplistic. I get that, but understand that the concepts apply to much more complex uh, sets of data. So here we just have a department one, and we have an east and a west uh, region. So in this case, it's a single Excel workbook with multiple, with multiple worksheet tabs in it. And uh, the technique I'll show you actually doesn't care whether you have um, uh, two tabs like I have or, or 30 or more than 30. It doesn't really matter. The concept works as well. So the first thing uh, as we're building uh, the budget methodology, I, we do want to be consistent, meaning the method that we use, the layout, has to be consistent between all of the different uh, worksheets that we create, all the different tabs. So that is where later on gathering up all the budget dollars, they all come from the same spot. In this case, our budget dollars January through December uh, are in the columns T through AE. And that consistency is important. Uh, the other thing that we want to do um, is, and in this part might not be quite as intuitive to you, uh, but the next part of it is that uh, we want to be able to identify which accounts 
are going to be the revenue type or the credit, specifically the credit types of accounts. Because when we're taking the, uh, the budget dollars back to the general ledger, even though we may be displaying them, we typically do as a positive number, they need to be gathered up and moved back to the general ledger as a negative number. So it's important that we can identify that. And the technique I'm using here, since it's uh, since uh, since this is a uh, say, build on Sage Intelligence, is I just simply did a, a lookup into the accounts tab, the hidden the hidden worksheet from that came from Sage Intelligence, uh, and and matched the account categories, and then we knew which ones were revenue and and knew that those would be uh, those would be the, the the accounts that need to have their sign reversed as we gather them up. That is multiply by a negative one. If you're not using Sage Intelligence, you could use a simple if statement, and that would be uh, would also work as well. Okay, so as as I said, um, the consistency across all of the different worksheets that we're building, uh, having the account numbers, the budget data by period, and then identifying which ones are the uh, the revenue and the credit types of accounts so we can reverse the sign. Okay, so the other one last thing regarding that during uh, on the setup side of it, if you're using Sage Intelligence, and you may find this if you're just using just straight uh, Excel, is that a lot of times there are other tabs in the worksheet that don't contain the budget dollars. So in the case of Sage Intelligence, right, we have all of those standard hidden worksheets that come down as part of Sage Intelligence. However, they don't contain our resulting budget dollars, so we want to ignore those. So a, a simple concept we can use there is just simply identifying um, each of the tabs, the worksheets in our workbook that we want to gather up. And what I did here is, if, if you take a quick look, I just put BUD dash in front of every tab that I want to gather up. So the later on we can filter out the ones that don't start with BUD dash. It's just that simple. Okay. So let, uh, let's get out of uh, the, the Excel file that we used to create the budget because the part I want to, I really want to focus on is using Power Query then to reach back into uh, this Excel file and gather up the budget dollars. Okay, so an important thing uh, as I'm designing everything is that I want to create a, a single folder and in that folder I will put the Excel file and you'll see here in just a moment and I could also have multiple Excel files here. So whether it's two files or three files or 50 files, Excel work, workbooks, if I drop them all in the same folder, the technique I'm going to show you can gather up the budget dollars out of the multiple Excel files and the multiple worksheet tabs contained within each Excel file. It's really powerful. So let me uh, let me show you that to you real quick. So I'm going to go over here to another Excel file that I created. And this is the one that I'm using uh, to gather up, pull together the entire collection of resulting budget dollars. And uh, we're using, again, as I mentioned before, Power Query is the tool that we use to accomplish that. It's really powerful. Okay, so we have two tabs, one to gather up the budget dollars and then another to reformat all of those budget dollars into the specific format that, that, that the general ledger needs on its import tool. And again, what I'm showing you specifically in this demo is, is for Sage 100. Okay, so Power Query. Power Query is a, a very, uh, very powerful, robust tool and uh, what it does for us is it reaches out into some source of data. In this case, it's going to be that folder where I have the Excel file. Reach into the folder and then pull out of there all of the, uh, all of the data, the, the budget data and, and actual data. Actually, I'm, I'm pulling both, both parts of it out um, from that Excel file. And what I really like about Power Query is, is once you once you connect to that source data, you're just applying some simple steps to take that source data and transform it, is the word they use, transform it into usable, usable information. 
And these steps are fairly simple and they're also repeatable. So if I just simply refresh the data, it's going to go grab that data from that, uh, all the data from, from all the Excel files in that folder. And then I can just close it and uh, refresh it back to, uh, to this plan sheet. Okay, you also find under Excel that we have the refresh under the data ribbon, the refresh button. So I can ask it to refresh this data. And then just that quickly, literally it's that fast, it pulled all the data together again. Okay, now that, that's pretty interesting and that gives us all the source data. This is pretty, pretty uh, robust that we can be able to grab all this that quickly. But, but in order to take the budget data back to the general ledger, we need to take one more step. And that is we're gonna go ahead and, and also use Power Query to take this source data, what we've gathered up together from the many different plan sheets and worksheets, uh, the many different workbooks and worksheets within those workbooks and transform it into the format that's ready to be imported back into Sage 100. Again, another, another Power Query. All right, and as I mentioned before, the Power Query is really nice in the sense that we point to our source data, in this case, the worksheet inside of this, uh, inside of this Excel file, and then we start to uh, transform it, uh, applying the, the steps that we need to, to turn this into the import file. And again, it's, it's uh, very repeatable, so that I can um, come here and just simply refresh that information. So now it just takes what is on the on this tab and it formats it exactly what Sage 100 needs in its import tool. Okay. All right, let me just uh, take one second and, and show this to you a little bit further because I mentioned how uh, the tools actually, the Power Query is actually gathering up the budget dollars from all of the Excel files that we drop in this folder. Just to show you what that might look like, I'm gonna go back and grab some additional files. So let's say in our budget process, we are creating these Excel files, we send them out to our department managers, our division managers, in this case, the administrative department manager. He's responsible for multiple departments, all of the admin departments. And then to our division manager, who's responsible, responsible for departments two, three, and four. And he or she returns them to us, and we just simply take them and drop them into that folder. Okay, so now that folder contains three files, each with multiple worksheet tabs in, uh, inside of them. And this is where I think the, the, the product really shines and you can start to get a glimpse of the power of Power Query. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna just simply go to my data ribbon, refresh all. And up here we can see that it's working, it's working, and it's done that fast. I've pulled all of my data from the many different worksheets, the many different uh, Excel files into this, uh, into this new Excel file, and it's now formatted and ready to import into Sage 100. Okay, I, I hope just uh, in showing you this high level uh, view of the power of this new tool for Microsoft, the Power Query, you can start to see how you can apply this to the things that you're doing on a regular basis. Um, uh, in talking with many of the, the folks that are doing this kind of work, budgeting uh, in Sage Intelligence or Excel, when we get around to this, the part of trying to take all of the budget information from many different uh, Excel files or many different worksheets and get it together in one spot so we can produce this import, a lot of you are spending hours, sometimes days in the process. And I showed you here how once we get it set up once, we can gather that data up in just a matter of a few uh, seconds or, or just a, a minute or two. It's extremely fast. Hopefully, when you look at all of the raw data here, and you see that we can easily identify uh, what worksheet it came, what workbook it came from, and work what work uh, what worksheet, and you can see that we can actually display here actuals as well as budget data. I would hope that your mind would start to think about how else we might apply 
uh, this tool and this technique to really help you in the in the budget process so let me go ahead and uh, shut this down I'm just gonna jump to one other place and show you very quickly a concept that I was that I'm alluding to here and um, while since we're already gathering up all of the budget dollars and actual dollars why not consider using this as your analysis tool as you're going through the budget cycle so let me show you what that might look like here real real quick so um, not only do we have now the budget dollars and actual dollars that we've brought in and again we can uh, refresh that data just this quickly using the fresh all refresh all button so now it's re gathering up the latest information in that folder uh, the resulting budget dollars followed then by the uh, budget balances and again this this is extremely fast I think we can, you can probably do that in just a couple minutes once I have all of this data both actuals and budgets why not consider using this for your analysis filtering the data pivoting the data or as I'm showing you here building a um, building the uh, the, the P&L summary statement now this is horrendously simple because uh, I'm doing just by the account categories I get that but but conceptually you can build the uh, report that you would take to the maybe to the board of directors uh, to the uh, uh, to the management team to get approval for this budget before you load it back into the general ledger but uh, why not use uh, the standard sum if sum if s type formulas to build your summary report right here if, and as I go through the multiple budget cycles I can just come right back here and just say okay I've gotten the new set of data from our uh, from our department and, and uh, division managers let's just simply refresh that data pull it in and uh, if we're uh, and then look at the new data in this uh, summary summary view and once we have something that's acceptable we'll take that to uh, to the management team and get approval once we have approval We'll just come back here and import this data into the general ledger.